And as we come in here, we're coming into match two, team three. And this is uh, with David having won the first match of these best two out of three matches. It's a slog. I mean, these players have been playing all day. They have finished their six rounds in the Swiss, and then they're playing best two out of three matches. And unlike last match, the loser of this is done. Like we, they, their tournament is completed, and uh, they they no longer are eligible to make it to the World Championships or the MPL. So certainly a high stakes match here. That's right. All right. Well, let's head in and see who's going to take down this tiebreaker match: David Inglis or Piotr Victor Jacques. All right, so of note here also, Luis, not in the same matchup because it was in historic, but these players actually played each other earlier today with Piotr having picked up the victory over David. So David looking for revenge on that. And then again, David's won the first match. He's put himself in a very good position. And as we come in, he actually just won game number two. So we're going to see if he can close this out with a game three victory over Piotr or if Piotr can pick up a match win and then force a third and deciding match between the two. So we are in a post sideboard scenario here with uh, David again on Gruel Adventures, Naya Winota for Piotr. And this is the first time that David's run into a, a Winota deck uh, in the tournament. If you're in his seat, he's the one who can win and advance right now, having been up a match. W what's your uh, primary concern here from Piotr? You. As you can see with uh, David's sideboarding, your main goal is to just keep Winota off the board. Red Cat Melee and Raven Feeblement are the two hate cards against Red and White, respectively. So David is prepared. I mean, he everyone, I think, in this tournament knew Winota was the, the new hot deck on the scene. So six one-mana removal spells for Winota certainly goes a long way. Wow, no kidding. Although thus far, we haven't seen any yet in the opener. We see... The Jaspera Sentinel hit the battlefield here, and he's got another one, and then another one after that as well in his opening hand, a little flooded on the Sentinels. Jaspera Sentinel is the kind of card you typically want to draw one of. <laughs> it, it's it, Drawing two or three is not really where you want to be. But on the other side of the table, Pewter had no creature on turns one or two, which is also a pretty good sign for David. All right, he's going to kick things off, though, with a nice one. It's an elite spellbinder for Pyotr. He's going to take a look at the hand and see Bone Crusher, Giant Burning Hands, and the Acroan War, as well as a land. He's going to take the most powerful option, the Acroan War, out of the equation, at least for a while. It's going to cost six mana now, but Love Struck Beast off the top here for David. That was an excellent draw because it powers up these Jasper Sentinels, and mm -hmm. uh, it's really going to help David deploy all his cards Elite Spellbinder can be an awesome card. We've seen it win some games this weekend. This is not one of those times when it's going to really do all that much. It can't even attack past Jess Parasenna. And in fact, one of the Sentinels is going to get chippy here and attack in. <laughs> Love it. And we actually see a block there from Piotr. So the <laughs> Chespera Sentinel did great work powering out a couple of cards and then trading for a 3-1 flyer. And all Piotr can come up with here, not super impressive, selfless savior and a prosperous innkeeper, though he does have Kenrith the Return King in hand. Wow, these are big hitters here for David. Now is Seekus Chariot off the top? Yeah, also looks great. The trade for Jasper Sentinel is actually really good for Piotr. That was a good call. Hard to hard to pull the trigger on trading a 3-1 flyer for a 1-2, but it's going to keep a Crow in War from being castable at least until David finds another land, which is pretty good when your plan is to try to ride this Kenrith to victory. David surveying the scene here. He can deploy a Seekus Chariot. He also could go for Bone Crusher Giant and Stomp or Bone Crusher Giant and Burning Hands. And he doesn't know the status of Piotr's hand, doesn't know if there's a Winota waiting there, because it wouldn't have been a good play last turn, but seems like a pretty appealing play next turn. And this is kind of how the Winota deck gets an edge, is people have to play defensively, because if, let's say, this was just a normal-ish aggro mirror, 
certainly David would be playing a Sika's Chariot and just getting onto the board. But because that might be bad in the face of a Winota, he's considering using Bone Crusher Giant to kill a 1-1 one -one that really doesn't have very many abilities. So that's a, that, that is a kind of after effect of playing around Winota. All right, well, it looks like he's going to kick things off here with a Lovestruck Beast attack. He also has the ability to attack with multiple creatures. There are only two 1-1s one on the other side of the battlefield. No, oh, it's just going to be the beast. And it's going to get in, so down to 16 goes Piotr. <laughs> and he did pass the turn back, Luis. That's respect. Yeah, and I think more than likely intending to cast Bone Crusher and Burning Hands on the two 1-1s. One Okay, it's going to be Kenrith the Return King. And now that uh, David's left up the mana, I think it's going to be pretty hard to turn down the opportunity to just cast both your burn spells here. First one's going to be on the Selfless Savior, taking away any options here from Pyotr. He's going to protect his Kenrith. But yeah, you want to get something out of this stomp, so hitting the Prosperous Innkeeper seems as good as anything else. And thanks to that treasure token, that Kenrith is quite the threat. David can't cast a crow in war. It, it, uh, at least Spellbinder did a, did a good job there. And you could attack the, with the Lovestruck Beast, but then Kenrith can uh, bring back, using the treasure, bring back the Selfless Savior to, to regain protection with the black ability or to start using the white, green, and red abilities kind of at will. Funny. Quick check there, but David's going to get in for five. Down to 12 goes Piotr. And it looks like David says, okay, you've only got one card left. I'm going to run out this Azika's Chariot. Here we go. It's quite a board state that David's built up here. Well, if you can't get the card off the board, going around it is, uh, is certainly very appealing. Could also play the Heart's Desire, but then you would no longer be able to crew the Chariot. So it really depends how, how kind of all in David's looking to go. And it looks like uh, pretty much all the way. We've got the, we've got your answer, Louise. All the way, says David Inglis. Passes a turn back. Shatter Skull smashing off the top here for Piotr. Can he do anything with that? Nothing too impressive because you could kill some 1-1s, one but... Or, or maybe kill some cats or something. But he already had Kenrith as a pretty big mana sink, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't be thrilled by the prospect of using Smashing. It might be the best play, but you, you were really looking for, well, ideally something a, a little bit cheaper. The king stands alone here. Yeah, he does take him off of two mana sources here. The Jesper Sentinels are the ones that are going to take the... Uh take the hit and that really does make the Akroan war a far <laughs> goal here now for Inglis. Never mind, you want to draw as many Jesper Sentinels as possible now that Peter's dealt with three of them. <laughs> <laughs> At least he got a two for one on that one. The other one was just a straight up trade for an elite spellbinder, but <laughs> these have all paid off given that David hasn't found another land. Well, the Lovestruck Beast can certainly attack. The question is, do you do something like play another Lovestruck, send in the Chariot and all the cats, or just attack with everything? You see, the Kenrith can block the Chariot, and then you're, you're, you're getting in 11 points of damage through? Seems pretty appealing, because without any non-humans in play, it's not like the Winota deck could come back from this pretty easily. Right, and then you've got this sort of time crunch on you, given that Kenrith or Turn King, you know, if given enough time, can kind of stabilize the board, gaining a bunch of life or even drawing cards at some point. Although 
Looks like that's a little difficult here with just the treasure tokens, but still, you really want to try to get your opponent dead, and this is a big step in that direction, and Elite Spellbinder off the top doesn't help. No, and I think uh, David Inglis has, it looks like, locked up his, his berth in day wow. three here, which comes along with a Rivals League invitation. Uh, really, really big big game here. This is at the kind of the proving ground, and you know these players battled to a 6-6 record after 12 rounds of Swiss, which if you're thinking about it like a normal tournament, doesn't sound like a good record. But when you're playing against competition of this level, going even, and then winning the tiebreaker match, that's an accomplishment, and uh, both these players should be proud of what they've accomplished. Yeah, they really should. David Inglis, too. Man, we've had him on camera a bunch over multiple events now. He just seems to be really dialed in, putting himself near the top of the standings consistently, and now he's poised to really capitalize on the great season that he's had by uh, by making it into this third day of competition, as you said, locking up rivals. And, you know, he's not done. He could run it up and find himself at the world championship if he does well tomorrow, if he can finish off this uh, this game. Kenrith can gain life. So this game, uh, yeah, the, the, there there is a possibility of, let's see, he can gain 10 life, but there's still not going to be enough here. There's just too many attackers, too many beasts, cats, so humans, this just the, the whole menagerie, and uh, <laughs> you know, Piotr uh, is is unfortunately staring at the end of his tournament. That's right, another great run for David Inglis here, and uh, Piotr, a really solid finish for him, but it looks like it might just be a bit short as we see David. Getting in the two five fives are going to get blocked. Then there's going to be maybe a plus one plus one counter. Is that no? He needs a life, doesn't he? Still facing down death here, and he got it. There's David Inglis with the big exclamation point on the victory here, and we're going to see him tomorrow in our top twelve. Fantastic work.